Hi guys, so today um, we're going to be working on clay notes and learning about clay. So on your table of contents, please for page 12, write clay vocabulary. And then after you've copied it onto your table of contents, turn to page 12 and write it at the top. Now this video you probably had to download to get it to work. So at any time if I'm going to fast for you um, with copying the notes down, just hit pause and then hit play again. So it's just a basic intro to clay. There's certain words I need you to know. I'm going to go into what clay is and what ceramics is and some of the tools we use. And then we're going to talk about what we're actually going to make for this project. So these are all the tools that you can use to make clay. We use um, one of these and then other stuff I have found cheaper versions because a lot of this is really expensive. This is a needle tool. Needle tools are really good um, for carving out like little, little um, types of details. Um, if you want to carve in like a little design. Um, the sponge is something we actually do use and you will have it at your table to use um, when we do this. Um, sponges are really good to keep things uh, wet the whole time we're working with it because if your clay dries out, it becomes brittle. It's really easy to break and you can't really do anything to it once it dries out. A ribbon tool is good for carving like medium sized designs out of your clay. It has a curved edge and a straight edge so you can do more of a circular design versus a square one. This is a loop tool. Loop tools are used to carve out like bigger parts of your clay. So like if I was making um, a bowl and I wanted it to have a huge like hole in it for some reason, then this would be good for that. The wire cutter, um, I do actually use one of these. It's used to cut the brick of clay it comes in. Like it comes in this big brick and I use the wire cutter to cut it down in the even squares for y'all. This is a metal rib and a wooden rib. They are good for like scraping the edges of your piece to kind of get all these little like boogie particles that happen or to even out your sides to make it pretty. And then this is the wood modeling tool, which again is just for modeling. Now we use alternative versions of some of these just because it's a little bit cheaper and um, they do the same thing. So what is clay? So on your notes page, write the word clay and then beside it write down what's underlined. So clay is a natural material, meaning that it comes from the earth. So I can go dig it up out of my backyard right now if I really want to use that clay. And clay is made up of tiny particles of rock. So back in the olden days when they would make things with clay, it is exactly what they did. They'd go dig up clay and they would use it. Today, the clay that we buy to work with in art class has a lot of this stuff processed out. The rocks are processed out. Um, grass or if that got in it or anything like that is kind of processed out so it's better for us and it's more usable. So clay, when it's mixed with enough water, will become soft like glued mud. However, it is very different than regular mud or sand because clay will hold a shape. Okay, If I make a sand castle and a wave comes, it's just going to dissolve it immediately. Or if I go outside and build something with mud, if it rains, it's just going to go away. Clay will hold its shape. Now, if I stick my piece in a bucket of water... For like a week or so, yes, it will finally dissolve down, but it takes a very long time. So clay can be pinched, rolled, cut, or built up in layers to form shapes of all kinds. You can make pretty much anything with clay, and I'm going to show you a lot of different things um, that you can make. Now, the clay that we buy for art class comes in three different colors. There's a white one, um, there's a reddish brown one, and then there's a gray one. I usually just buy the white one because for us, um, I know y'all like to experiment with color, making things a lot of colorful. So the white one's usually what we do because the reddish brown one in the middle, a lot of times people just clear coat that so that you still get that brown color. So in your notes, now write the word ceramics, which is at the top of the slide, and then copy what is underlined. So I know a lot of you have probably heard the word pottery or clay. When the actual term for working with clay in an art classroom like ours is ceramics. Ceramics are the actual pots and other articles that are made by clay that's been hardened by heat. So other articles just means it can be anything. A bowl, a pot, a vase, 
um, an animal, a person, whatever it is you are making out of clay. But that clay has been hardened by heat to make that piece of article more substantial, um, harder to break, and in some cases usable. So you've been able to like drink out of your cup or use your bowl for your cereal or whatever it is. So what is a ceramicist? So next on your notes, write what is a ceramicist and then write what's underlined beside it. So um, this is a career. A ceramicist is a person who makes ceramics. So their job is to create these pieces of pottery. Okay. Um, this is a job you can have. So I know a few ceramicists. My cousin is one. They actually make sets of plates and dishes that you can buy. They also make just figurines or animals or anything like that out of clay and they sell it and that is how they make money. So for the next week you will be a ceramicist while we work on our clay piece. Other terms that you probably have heard is pottery which is just another word for ceramics. The things that you've made from the clay and then Potter is another word for ceramicist. So if you say that we're doing pottery, then you're a potter for the next week. So there are a couple different ways that you can make something with clay. Two techniques. The first one is wheel throwing. So this is a picture of an electric wheel. So what it is, is it's just this big wheel and um, there's three different types. There's a kick one. So literally, I just sit there and kick it to get it to turn. There's a one speed one where when I plug it into the wall, it goes one speed. And then there's one like a car. It has a pedal. So you are moving this clay in different ways to kind of get this bowl or cup or whatever you're trying to make. Okay. So we're going to watch this video. And I'm going to mute it so I can talk through it. And I'm going to skip around. So what you do is you just take your piece of clay and you throw it down in front of you and you're just going to sit here and mold it and you're going to shape it into all these different things. Now she has a cup of water right there because it's just like if you've ever gotten rug burn, this is moving at such a high speed that your hands are sucking the moisture out of the clay and if you don't um, put water on your hands, then it starts to affect it. Okay, so what she's doing is she's just going to shape it into different ways. She's using her hands to push and pull the clay in different directions. Um, most of the time, the way she pulled that up to begin with is so that she can get like all the air bubbles that might be in your clay out. And now she's just kind of pushing it back down to again to get rid of any air bubbles that might be there. So she's just going to sit here and push and pull the clay until she kind of gets what she wants from it. Um, she's actually going to make a bowl. Um, so she, now she's using the pressure of her palm to push down to create this hole in the middle where your center of your bowl would be. Okay. So literally, it is just the pressure and the way she's moving her hands on this, pushing down, pulling, um, that is making this come out and be what she wants. Okay. Now I'm going to fast forward a little because we don't, you don't need to watch the whole thing. So now she's doing it again. So she made this big opening. She has using her fingers now to get out any of the lumps that you might have in the middle. So all she's literally doing is pushing from either side and pulling up at the same time to create this wall. Okay. And she just continues to do this. There's that rib tool we saw. So she's using it to kind of scrape and make sure her lip of the um, pot is right. So the lip is like literally the edge where you would put your mouth if you were drinking out of a bowl. All right, and she just keeps going and going, and then finally she cuts it. She's going to cut it off, okay? So she takes that wire cutter, and she cuts the bottom, and then she's going to very, very carefully do that because if she lifts up at any point in that, she's going to cut her bowl in half, and then she's just going to twist it off of there to make it a little easier. See? And then you made it. So that is how you do um, 
a will throw. Now, wills are very expensive, and that is why we do not have any in our room. We do hand building, okay? So it's creating clay by your hand. There are three ways that you can create a piece of clay by hand, okay? The first one is pinch. Most of you have probably made a pinch pot sometime in elementary school. Pinch pot is using your fingers to pinch and shape the clay. So literally, you're just using the pressure of your fingers, very similar to how you're doing it on a wheel. You're just holding it in your hand. Then there's a coil. A coil is a rolled out snake-like piece of clay. So it is literally a strip of clay that is rolled out that looks like a snake, okay? It is evenly rolled out across. Coils can be used for anything. If you look at this pot, it can be used for that. So literally each one of those sections is a coil. You can build anything imaginable with a coil. You can make three and braid them if you were making a person. You can make so many things out of it. What we're going to do for this project is use a slab. So next in your wrote notes, write the word slab and then write what's underlined. So a slab, S-L-A-B, is a flat pancake-like sheet of clay. Okay. Slabs are really good for things that you want to be structurally sound. So if you look at the image on the right, it looks like he's making like a house, right? He's making a box. So slabs are really good because you can cut really straight edges on things. Okay. So, we're going to watch a video about how to make a slab. Now, in art, you can buy a slab roller, okay, um, which we actually have in the art room. Um, but for sixth grade, you have to learn how to make one, okay. So, he's telling you right now that you don't need to use... A roller for it you don't need to use a slab roller which is what that is in front of him and there's one in the back of our classroom you literally can just use your hands okay so he's going to show you so you always start out with slabs really good for things like that cups you can make anything out of it um so that's what clay looks like when you get it. It's this big piece of clay like that. And then if you can see, he's going to cut it down to what um, size he wants. And I will already have this cut for you, so you don't have to worry about it when you do yours. Then you want a clean workspace, and you want your piece of clay. Because you're going to be throwing this piece of clay around... And you don't want it to um, have anything near it that it can stick to and stuff like that. So he's literally going to pick it up. And when he tosses it on the table, he's going to pull it towards himself so that it expands that way. So watch him. When you do it, you're like hitting one end on the table and the other end's coming at you. See? Now he threw it pretty hard, which we're going to do, but we don't want to like break the table doing it. So you're going to keep doing this. Now, as he does it, you want to turn your piece. You always don't just want to throw the same side at you. So pick it up and turn it, pick it up and turn it, pick it up and turn it. Um, until you get it a good size. Okay. Whatever size you want. So he's just going to keep doing that until he's satisfied with what size he wants. Now, rule of thumb when it comes to slabs, you don't want them to be thicker than your thumb. Like, turn your thumb sideways from side to side of it. Okay. And then he's just going to keep going. And he's going to make it pretty long. And then he's cleaning the edges, which we'll talk about later when we do it. Okay. So, I just want to put this word in your head as sixth grade. We don't actually do it in sixth grade. Um, score and slip. If I was going to make something in clay that then I was going to attach another piece of clay to it, you have to score and slip it. Just like if I gave you two sheets of paper to make them stick together, you have to glue it. This is like the glue of clay. So, score is using a tool to put scratch marks around it. So, if you look at these pieces of clay, you can kind of see where they're going to join the two. They have these little scratch marks and then slip is a liquid form of clay so then you paint slip all around it and you stick them together and then you smooth out the edges so you score it you slip it you stick it 
you smooth the edges. Okay. So next in your notes, write the word kiln, K-I-L-N, and then write the underlined part. So I kept saying that clay has to be hardened by heat for it to use. The way you harden the clay by heat is using a kiln. A kiln is a oven that bakes it and makes it usable. So if you look at the image on the left, this is what a kiln looks like if it was on. So kilns get really, really hot. So different types of clay bake at different temperatures, just like if, you know, if you're at home baking a pizza versus the cake, they might do it at different temperatures in your oven. The, uh, the kiln gets up to about 5,000 degrees, okay? So it gets really, really hot. The clay I buy that we use bakes at around about 1,800 to 2,000 degrees, um, and it bakes for a really, really long time. So when we do this, your piece literally will be in that kiln for over 24 hours, okay? It gets really, really hot, and that's why it takes so long because it takes, you know, three or four hours to get it that high, and then it bakes for a couple hours, and then it takes another couple hours for it to get low enough for me to be able to open it, okay? So the image on your right is kind of what a kiln looks like. They make really small kilns that I could literally put one piece in, and they make huge ones that are like the size of the closets in my classroom. Ours looks very similar list, but ours is more of a rectangle instead of this look is like more oval. Okay, there are six stages of clay. So there's slip. It is super wet. Um, we use it as the glue. It'll be on your tables. You can't really do anything with it when it's this wet, though. It's literally like mud. Then what we use when we are creating, it's called wet clay. It is clay that can be used um, to construct and model whatever we're doing. Now, as we work with clay, it's going to start going through the other phases because we are drying it out by touching it or drying it out because it's being exposed to air, things like that. So the next stage is leather hard. If your piece hits leather hard in my class, it is no longer usable, okay? So leather hard is halfway dry and good for carving. Leather hard means it is very, very fragile and it is very, very easy to break by you, by me. You just putting it on your table too hard when you're carrying your piece around could break it, okay? So between wet and leather hard could take a week. Between wet and bone dry could take another week, okay? Bone dry means that it is air dry and ready for the kiln. So the, and that's your next word to write. So write bone dry and then write what's underlined. So when we finish our project, okay, let's say we finished on a Friday. I cannot put it in the kiln into at least 10 days later because we want all of the moisture in our clay to dry out. If I put your piece in the kiln and it has moisture in it, it is air and air tries to escape. Okay. Cause water's evaporating. Like when you put it in the kiln, it's like when you boil something. And if you have a piece, an air pocket in your piece or you have too much moisture in it, your piece might explode in the kiln. And I mean explode, like into pieces. People don't believe me, but literally, if yours has air in it or water and it explodes, it's going to explode your piece and anyone's who's beside yours in the kiln. All right. Next in your notes, write bisque, B-I-S-Q-U-E, and then write what's underlined beside it. So the next stage is bisque. So what happens is when it gets bone dry, okay, I put it in the kiln. And when it comes out of the kiln cooked once, it is bisqueware. So it's fired in the kiln once, and it's now white hard rock. It is not as easy to break now. So bone dry, I literally could put it down on the table too hard, and it could crack. Bisqueware is harder to break. It's like the bowls and plates you have at home. Now, if I throw it across the room, yes, it's going to break. But it's not going to do that um, if I just place it down on the table too hard. Okay. Then six is glazed. So it's fired in the kiln again, but this is when you paint it. So this is what I want you to write for glaze. So write glaze, used to color, decorate, or waterproof a piece of clay. So glaze is used to make your piece pretty, okay? In some cases, it's to waterproof it. So if we were making a cup, for example, and we used a certain type of glaze, then you could use that cup. You could drink out of it. You could eat out of the bowl, whatever it is, okay? Some clay is just decorative. It's not made to um, make your piece usable, um, and some just for color. So I buy clay glaze that when you get to eighth grade and we do make something that you can eat or drink out of that it is usable. So I could wash it when I'm done. I can use it to drink water out, water out of whatever. Okay. 
Now glaze, when you first paint it on there, is very dull and it smells really, really bad. When I bake it in the oven again, the kiln, it then comes out like this shiny that you see in this picture. Okay. So next in your notes, write subtractive and then write the two things that are underlined. So in art, um, there are two ways to um, work on your piece. There's subtractive and additive. So subtractive is taking things out of the clay or carving into the clay. So if you look at the image on the right, they've literally carved a whole circle out. It is gone. Okay. On the left, you see that they've just made impressions in the clay, but clay is missing because you went into it. Okay. So there's ways to carve it completely away or ways to just carve a little bit out of what you see or make an impression. Okay. So there are 10 golden rules of ceramics and I will reiterate them and say them again when we do this. The entire time we are working, clay must be thoroughly covered with a plastic bag to keep it from drying out and wet paper towels. Okay. Now the day that we are done, you no longer have to wrap it, but every day you can't. Right. Number two, clay dust can be harmful if you are exposed to, exposed to it for long periods of time. So keep your area clean. Clay scraps off the floor and clean with water and sponge. What happens when we work with clay is it's dusty. It gets everywhere and it is um, just going to happen. But you need to be conscious of your cleaning up after yourselves while we do this. And that when you get clay on your hands and it starts to dry, do not clap your hands and make clay dust go all over everywhere. Okay, number three, clay should be no thicker than your thumb. Okay, if it is thicker than your thumb, it takes a really, really, really long time to dry out and we won't be done by the end of the nine weeks. All right, um, number four, in order for clay to sit together, it must be scored and slipped together, which you don't need to worry about um, because we don't do that till seventh grade. So wedge clay to remove air bubbles and achieve uniform consistency and line up the clay particles. We will wedge clay. It's the first thing you do because we don't want an air bubble in there because if there's an air bubble trapped in your clay, it explodes. Trapped air can cause clay to expose. So hollow out forms need a hole in them. So like we are making um like a spear and um, it has to be hollow on the inside because it's too thick. So don't glaze the bottom of the piece. Okay. So when we glaze, do not glaze the bottom. When that glaze goes in the kiln, it heats and it kind of melts a little. And if you have glaze on the bottom, it's going to melt your piece to the clay shelf, uh, the kiln shelf. And then I can't get it off. Wash the piece before glazing. You just kind of want to get some of the dust particles off before you start glazing it. Handle your project with two hands at all times. In other words, be careful. It's your hard work. I watch kids do this to where when they're walking around the room with it in one hand, it slides out off the board they're carrying on and it breaks into a million pieces on the floor. So use two hands and never, ever, ever handle another person's work. Even if it looks cool, you're going to see other people's work in here and you're going to want to touch it. Please refrain from touching it. If it's, if someone has put their piece like somewhere that you need to get to, then have me move it. So you're not responsible. So what are we creating? We're going to create examples like these. We're going to make a clay loom and I'm going to get into what that is right now. Okay, so the next definition I want you to write is weaving and then write the things that are underlined. All right, so these are terms I need you to know that will make sense when we start making our piece. So we're going to make a clay loom, meaning um, it's going to contain a weaving. And a weaving is when two distinct sets of yarns are interlaced to create a new design. Most of you have probably made a weaving sometime in elementary school um, where you have one set of threads that go up and down. And then the side, the side ones go over, under, over, under, over, under them until you have this cool design. Okay. We're going to skip the brief history of weaving and we will do that together as a class later. So a weaving is produced on something called a loom. So next in your notes, write loom and then write what's underlined. So a loom is objects that hold the fabric together for a weaving. So if I'm going to make a weaving, I have to have something that holds it together. So on the right, this little um, wooden structure, it's kind of small. The one on the left is a huge loom that was used back in the day to make like large pieces of fabric. Um, most of the time in elementary, you use a piece of cardboard. Our loom is going to be our piece of clay. It is what is going to hold our weaving together. So 
you can pick whatever shape you want this to be. So if you look at all the pieces on here, um, an infinity sign, a raindrop, or a random organic shape, a flower, things like that, okay? Um, I've had kids do a donut, a piece of pizza. There's so many infinite things that you could do for this, okay? So what I want you to think about between now and when you come back to class on Monday is what you kind of want yours to look like. Right, I will tell you that more circular ones work better because sometimes when you have to cut it like into the triangle here or um, this infinity one here, it gets really hard to do. And if you want to do a flower, that's perfectly fine. You can do hearts, anything like that. Um, and sometimes we kind of have to change what it is. So you can do a geometric shape or an organic shape. So we've already talked about the difference between both of those. So you can do either one you want. All right. So that's it for your notes. Make sure you have them all and bring them back to class on Monday. Um, if you type in clay loom on Google, it'll give you so many different options of what you can do. So, if, you know, we're going to make the clay piece first. We will let it dry, then we'll glaze it, and then I'll bake it again, and then we will do the weaving part. Okay, so we will take a break and do a different project in between the two. Okay. Hope you all have enjoyed this. I'll see you on Monday.